I think I lost about 10 years of my life yeah. in that. We get to play with them, our brand new toys. Should we do a flitter race? Yeah. Let the challenge begin. It feels really, really surreal to be turning to face downwind and then dropping anchor and reversing back into the wind, but that's how they do it, so we're gonna give it a shot. We've gotta do something piratey, like steal some money. Are you getting picky over your coffin? Yeah. It doesn't feel right, does it? <laughs> Last time on Red Seas, we finished off in the boatyard and finally got our copper coat application back on track. Newton and his team gave Indioko a really good wax and polish to clean up all the dirt from the last two months on the hard. And at long last, we splashed back in the water to head for new horizons in search of adventure. and basically just needed some time to recover. So we came here to paradise and we've been doing absolutely nothing since. Yeah, we got our feet wet when we splashed in Trinidad after the whole copper coat stuff and all the boatyard work that was absolutely manic. I think I lost about 10 years of my life yeah. in that. <laughs> uh, as soon as we were wet, we gunned our way north and we got ourselves to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, which is paradise. It's absolutely incredible here. Yeah, we've just been like swimming, snorkeling, playing around, doing oh, nothing. Man. Living a high life, seriously. And uh, yeah, it's been absolutely incredible. And uh, you know, we're absolutely loving every moment of it. But... We are not very good at staying in one place for very long. As beautiful as it is, we need to go searching for new horizons. So it's time to make a move. It's time to move. And after a lot of discussion... We think we've made a decision. Possibly in the direction. Heading west. Aiming for... Ultimately. If we manage it. Panama. Panama. We're heading west. We're doing it. We're going to aim west, although that's kind of scary because it means leaving the Caribbean, which is all Indioko has ever known. Yeah. It's all we've ever sailed in Indy. It's yeah. Where, it's where we met her, we bought her, we sailed her, we hauled her, and now we're taking her away from home. It's going to be a huge challenge for sure, and I'm sure that plenty is going to go wrong. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> it is us wrong. after all. Yeah. But we'll see how that works out. And uh, the only thing is, uh, we typically, being us, we can't go in a straight line. We have <laughs> got a few errands we have to do along the way. So we're going to have to do a bit of a zigzaggy road. Yeah. Don't so that's why you're here, right? It's all part of the fun. Well, you get to learn as we get to learn. That's pretty much the deal. So yeah, we're going to have to do a couple of things before we can actually get to Panama. But in general, that's the way we're going. Yeah. Generally. Can we just maybe have one more drink before we get going? OK, one more. We are so excited because we ordered these things months ago and finally they are here and we get to play with them, our brand new toys! Stuff! So exciting! Stuff and plastic! So I heard somebody explain it really well once before, which is when you live on a boat, you don't go for a jog on your boat. So these things, although they're toys, they're actually the way we're going to exercise. That At least cool. that, that's the way you justify it to yourself. Moment of truth. This is it. It looks a bit small. I think it gets bigger with air. <laughs> we should highlight there's no product placement. We're not big enough or interesting enough for any manufacturer to provide this stuff. So just no, in we case just anyone thinks we're pitching, that's not what this is. Oh, it looks cool already. Yeah, it does. We're going to need a bigger boot. <sighs> <laughs> it's so colorful. Look at it. <gasps> I love it. <laughs> I'm done. Right, I'll put it in the water. You try, try jumping on board. <laughs> so who's going to do the fun part of inflating this? I nominate you. <sighs> Sorry, we've got two of them. <laughs> Oh, we can race. Should we do an inflator race? Yeah. Okay, deal. It's 
So the challenge is simple. First person to get one bar of pressure in their paddleboard wins. The other person has to finish the other paddleboard. Oh, come on. Perfect. So one and a half boards for Brian Eight, one well, half a board for me. That's how this is going to go. OK, let the challenge begin. You wish. <laughs> this is when we find out these pumps aren't actually engaging. <laughs> it's a bit like a pogo stick. That would make this so much more fun if you had to bounce your way to fill up your paddleboard. The end of mine is folded over. Come on. Come on. I definitely thought I would be halfway there by now. I'll be honest, I'm feeling optimistic. <laughs> I'm just playing the tortoise game. If I come over and push you into the sea, that'll buy me at least a minute while you swim around to the back. Okay, ten it's hard left. So if you win, you have to finish filling up my paddlewood. No, the other way around. Well, yours will be done, so I can finish filling up yours. All oh, the ends are popping out. What are you going to call yours? Ooh, Alfred. And you? Penelope? Penelope and Alfred. Penelope paddlewood. Oh, it's actually hard work now. Let me tell you that rushing at the start maybe wasn't the best strategy. Trying the knee technique. What's that song? Hum did lead lead hum did lie. I'm a, I'm a third of the way there. I'm 0.75, three quarters. Oh, I'm feeling it. There's the burn. Nearly halfway. Closing in. Uh, 0.75. <laughs> I can't push it down. <laughs> <laughs> One more, I think I'm there. Looks like it's gonna pop. <laughs> One bar. <sighs> Victory is mine. All right, I think Ian is just about done with all his boasting. I have finally finished filling up my paddleboard, so we're gonna get these in the water and uh, see if we can actually balance on them. <laughs> I mean, it looked good. Looking good. Well, that didn't last long. About 10 minutes of playing on the water and uh, I heard a little pinhole leak, which I think is just coming from this air intake. So I have taped it up. We're gonna shove some 4200 on there and uh, hopefully it won't deflate when I jump on it next. This is going to be so messy. Don't ruin it. <laughs> You're ready with soapy water and stuff, right? Yeah, I don't think we need very much. Yeah, and I'm known for being uh, delicate, sparing. <laughs> you look good. I have faith in you. Okay, soap it up. So, using Newton's trick with the soapy water. Thank you, Newton. Look how smooth it goes. I just don't want it to drip onto the board. Can't take you anywhere. This is why we can't have nice things. Or maybe this is why you shouldn't try and do handstands on a paddleboard when you don't know what you're doing. 
I think that might be done. I'm gonna go a little bit more skidgy. Don't get it all over the boat, don't get it all over the boat. Better not, we just cleaned the boat. <laughs> Looks pretty clean. Yeah, doesn't look too bad. I think I'm gonna leave it there and uh, we'll just see if that works. Sounds good. So it's been a long time coming, but we are finally preparing to greet our first ever guests on Indy, my parents. However, this cabin does need a little bit of TLC. So these mattresses are so uncomfortable. We lasted about a week before we had to buy ourselves a memory foam mattress topper. Um, but we only have one, so we are gonna be ever so kind and generous and put it on the bed in the guest cabin. So hopefully they will actually be able to get a good night's sleep. Okay, sheets on next, but I'm too tired. Ian, that can be your job. I'm going. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna make them a little welcome basket. So we're gonna put some towels in there. Ian, have you got the bigger towels? <laughs> now they'll be dirty! Okay, so uh, yeah, towels on a boat, come, <laughs> come with a mandatory eye patch apparently. We've got a new blackout blind on this hatch and then I've made them a little port light cover which hopefully will keep most of the light out in the mornings because we don't get up with the sun. I don't think that's necessary when you live on a boat. Everybody else degree disagrees, but that'll do. And we've got our visitor's book to prove they've been here and some nice Red Seas water bottles. So. Everybody can keep hydrated. I think we're ready. Here we go. You excited? Yeah, it should be interesting. This is their first time in the Caribbean. And, and their first time on a cat. First time in a cat. They've sailed a lot on monos, but first time in a cat. And they've just basically done the same route we did to get here a year ago. That's the really odd thing that it's like literally in the same hotel that we quarantined in and we're back in the same place. And the same hotel that you quarantined in for the volcano thing. Yeah. Like, Feels like home. <laughs> so we're getting used to this place. We should get miles and uh, get points. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they cope. I know that they are still getting used to the heat. So Scotland right now is what? Yeah, 8 like, degrees Celsius? Yeah. And it's 30 today and it hasn't really heated up yet, so it could be interesting. Yeah, we might need to slow, down, slow our pace down a little bit. Switch. We'll see. I mean, they used to live in the Middle East, so they know what it's like to be hot. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. Exactly. So it's going to be fun to then introduce them to Indy. They've never really met Indy. Yeah. videos and things. I think we picked quite a nice mirroring wall for a picturesque moment. I love it that there's nobody else here as well. Great. Like, yeah, whole day to ourselves. So yeah, we're just gonna pick up their bags, pick up them and yeah, introduce them. <laughs> All right. All right. giving his parents a quick tour of the boat to show them where everything is so that we can put them straight to work and uh, have extra crew while we're sailing. So I think we're gonna head north around the west coast of St. Vincent a little bit, uh, heading up to a bay called Walibu Bay, which is apparently where they filmed uh, parts of Pirates of the Caribbean, the first film. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to exploring it and it sounds like it's gonna be a really easy sail because I'm not gonna have to do anything. We've got crew, this is gonna be great.
This is so relaxing. We've got a nice little bit of downwind. There's not much wind, so we're just kind of pottering along. It going six knots, it doesn't feel like it. Um, but yeah, everyone's just chilling out on the trampoline, settling in. Nice. So we're coming into Wallaboo Bay here and it's just absolutely stunning, like proper Caribbean little seaside town. Not even a town, just tiny little bay. Um, yeah, so we're really looking forward to exploring. I think there's a waterfall somewhere nearby, maybe some good snorkeling, there's some caves. And uh, yeah, we get to pretend to be pirates. <laughs> So this guy called Sean just came out on his kayak to kind of explain the system here. It's not something that we've done before. Um, he said that we need to drop anchor. The wind is coming in from the east, but we have to turn and drop anchor and then reverse up to shore and give him a super long stern line that he can tie to shore. Now we don't have lines that are that long enough, so his dad is just tying two together and we're hoping that that is going to reach. So it feels really, really surreal to be turning to face downwind and then dropping anchor and reversing back into the wind. but. That's how they do it, so we're going to give it a shot. And we made it. <laughs> this is the weirdest setup I have ever seen. So Sean told us to drop anchor as we were like reversing back towards the shore. We were still at 23 meters of depth, so we bunged out 50 meters of chain, reversed back. We had to tie two lines together and he's tied them around a coconut tree on the shore. Um, we then put the bridle on and kind of floated out again and suddenly we're only in three and a half meters of water. So our chain is clearly not doing enough to actually hold us. Uh, so we kind of looked at it, we felt like we were too shallow. So we tied a third line on, came out and took up 10 meters of chain. So we've only got 40 meters of chain out, which is only like a two to one scope, not ideal, but we are so sheltered here. We're hoping that with that and with three lines tied on at the back that we just aren't gonna go anywhere, but we feel eerily close to rocks and crashing waves and stuff. It is, yeah, really weird, but we're done now and we can go and explore. <laughs> I feel it's only right to like wear the proper attire when you're getting off your boat and walking down the dinghy, the dock towards Port Royal. Got to do something piratey, like steal some money. Also, my depth perception is completely gone, so when there's holes in the dock, I definitely think I'm gonna splash. <laughs> this is exactly how Johnny Depp did it. Oh. <laughs> It's looking a bit skinny. Yeah, it's <laughs> a bit weak. And now you have to recreate it in the ones over there. <laughs> I don't know if I can decompose that fast. <laughs> Are you getting picky over your coffin? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, you've got to get inside. Don't Come on. Die. <laughs> this doesn't feel right, does it? <laughs> Do you think this is the canoe that they like? Walked out underneath. underneath to the boat. I mean, it could be. It does look very film setty. <laughs> I think we're going to have to try doing that now. Oh, come on. We'll send your parents back to the boat and then we'll see if oh, we can okay. sneak up on them. Yeah, okay, that's definitely going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really cool. This is the film set that they used to film uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl, and I think they did use it in some of the later films as well. Um, so this was supposed to be the kind of set for Port Royal in supposedly in Jamaica. Um, and yeah, it would have been bustling town, loads of pirates and uh, soldiers and stuff around. And it's kind of closed to visitors. There's loads of people here working and restoring the buildings and stuff. Uh, but we were just walking through and found this wall of loads of behind the scenes photos of all the cast and crew during filming. And then they've all signed this massive poster here. It's just unreal. We're in this tiny little unheard of bay on the side of St. Vincent and it was this huge film set. You can even see the dinghy duck where we tied up our dinghy with all these huge tall ships on. It's just, yeah, I cannot comprehend it, but it's pretty awesome to be here. Like the forgotten scenes. Yes. That's it. Do you want to see the first run of the movie? This is the bloopers. 